Hello everybody, you're playing Dracula Origin. This game came out in 2008 and I'm playing it on Steam. Um, and yeah, here we go. We're gonna do a new game even though I've been playing it already a little bit, but it didn't record it and the screen was way too big and didn't record my voice, so we're gonna restart it. Other than sunlight, which can be fatal to them, there are very few ways in which to conquer a vampire. However, various legends and reference books about these creatures of the night, as well as my own experiments, have affirmed the following. Firstly, vampires detest the smell of garlic. This preventative measure, used in a good number of regions subject to the depredation of these creatures, is omnipresent in the folklore of these aforementioned regions. Secondly, vampires cannot endure the fact that they cannot see their reflection in a mirror. This optical effect, which I feel confident I can witness, strikes them like a club with the vacuity and aberrance of their existence. Thirdly, some storytellers mention an irrational fear of running water, as well as a specific vulnerability to silver bullets. I have not been able to test and validate these theses. In fact, during the half a lifetime that I have dedicated to the research and annihilation of these creatures, I have only had as true recourse three weapons which have proven decisive. The crucifix foremost. Brandished with conviction, it fights off these creatures and prevents for a moment all attacks from them. Next, holy water. It serves to inflict wounds on the creature because it burns its flesh like acid. Lastly, a wooden stake is the final instrument of destruction. After having discovered the sanctuary of the enemy, one must profit from its damned slumber in order to strike with the greatest force into the beating heart of... Professor, it's me. It's Maria, your lodger. Professor, there's a letter here. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Slide it under the door. Can I get you anything, Professor? Something to eat, perhaps? Mm. What? No. No, thank you, Maria. But, Professor, it's been four days now that you haven't been outside, is it? Maria, I am trying to work. Leave me in peace. Okay, she slides it under the door. My friend, how can I allow you to leave, and what will become of you? I should have been in your place in this cursed castle, and been destroyed by the one whom I have chased for years. You, you've had Mina, poor thing. What grief I will cause when I shall tell her the news. There isn't a moment to lose. We must inform Mina. She is in grave danger. All right, so the game starts. Dear Professor, it's a strange manner in which to commence a letter, but I hope that you shall never have to read these words, for if that is the case, it is because a grievous destiny worse ever than death, worse even than death, perhaps, has put an end to my existence. Know that at the time in which I write these lines, I find myself in the very heart of evil in one of the rooms of Count Dracula's castle. This missive will take many weeks to reach you, more time than my return trip to London which I will make if I am able to carry through my terrible task. This letter should have, thus have no re relevance. How, hence, if you are reading this, pray for my soul. Find the beast's lair was no simple task. The Count's subordinates are else everywhere east of Vienna, and they maintain a veil of secrecy and terror reg regarding the very existence of our enemy. With force, persuasion, th threats, and silver pieces, I managed to find the proximate location of the Count's grounds. During my trip to the accursed place, chance pl placed a young scholar's team had been attacked by bandits in my path. Grave wounds had forced him to take rest of an inn before he could resume his journey. To Count Dracula's dwelling, where he is supposed to take inventory of the library, I appropriated the young man's letter of introduction and extract him from the necessary piece of information to get him get to the castle. I arrived on the night of the second day at an immense fortress, seeping with death and corruption where the origin of the evil over fighting is found. My first meeting with the Count left me in a memory that will haunt me the end of my days. How to imagine such nobility, charm, and benevolence in the behaviors of a man who only by his icy, demented look 
betrays his true nature. I was just as subjugated by his elegance as his intelligence. Upon my nocturnal arrival, we discussed at length my alleged library experience. He immediately noted my accent and asked questions that were both precise and direct. I was a mouse attempt to answer the cat, and despite myself, I gave away my identity as well as my Lenin heritage. He seemed to read into each of my answers, and it was a devil of a task to mutter an explanation of my presence here as a delegate from a large Viennese, Viennese library. He then interrogated me regarding Lenin England and seemed genuinely impassioned to hear about life in our capital. I then had the misfortune to mention you meet on my dear betrothed while recalling afternoon spent boating. The Count pressed me in an almost impertinent manner to show me a photograph of her. I complied and was then struck with an infinite terror by the Count's rapacious and carnivorous great gaze as he examined the face of my loved one's grass under between his hands. I feigned a very believable fatigue and isolated myself in my quarters. Sleep did not find me that night or any of the falling nights, terrifying abnormal noises mixed with the howling of the wolves that swarmed the region. The cat has been absent for three days, but his abominable servant assures me he is to return tonight. I will wait no longer to spring into action. The immense place abrasses me, and it seems that the shadows themselves are alive, observing me and tormenting me with their laughter. I miss Mina so much, but what I want to give to be by her side, I don't dare write her. She won't understand the dangers that my mission involves. Assure Mina once again of the complete devotion to her, and if you receive this letter, ensure that she knows my last thoughts were of her. Your student and friend, Jonathan Harker. Okay, we're going to read this very quickly. Uh, News Times, September 8, 1898. A domestic drama, a sad and bloody business, took place yesterday on the first floor of a small residential building located next to the New Kent Road. Station from interviews with the neighbors, young Garrett Melford first killed his young wife, Magdalene, in a fit of jealousy before dying himself. The young married couple had moved in only two months ago. Mr. Melford was employed as foreman at Grimble and Bosby Cement Works. Various testimony confirms that early in the evening, in the absence of her husband, Miss Melford admitted an elegant man dressed in black into their flat. Shortly thereafter, Mr. Melford returned the domicile after a long day of work. As soon as he entered the flat, an eerie and colossal black bird flew out of one of the windows in the direction of National Gallery. A cry could be heard as well as the sound of a struggle and finally a gunshot. After an alarming silence, some of the neighbors entered in the flat only to find Miss Melford stretched out lifelessly on the bed um, with a bleeding wound to the neck. Mr. Melford was sitting on a chair, his skull agape, and a still smoking pistol at his feet. A small crowd gathered around the place, which most certainly allowed the third player in this drama the opportunity to abscond. Upon the arrival of the police, they concluded that it was a murder passion followed by a suicide, even though the exact unfolding events as well as the identity of the lady's nocturnal visitor are still unknown. Note, the testimonials taken at the crime scene are very troubling, particularly in regard to these eerie and colossal black bird. See last Tuesday's edition for a report on an equally unnerving event. Okay, that's the first newsletter. Come in, Professor. I am pleased to see you. Please excuse the disorder in my attire, but I haven't had the strength to attend to the housekeeping this morning. Your dress is fine. What is going on? But what is going on, Mona? And where is your servant? Jenny is absent. She... She's with her sister. Can I My God, the I'm at a loss of a word. We found her poor sister yesterday dead. An atrocious crime. Today's newspapers gives the heinous details. The police came here to break the news to Jenny. She was shocked and had to go to the police station to identify her sister. What a tragedy! She was my junior by three years and now she's dead. But what a paltry hostess I am. To what pleasure do I owe your visit? Have you received news of Jonathan? Ah, not at the moment. I came to see if all was well. Jonathan repeatedly insisted I take care of you. I reckon. Could I take you for a stroll in the park, perhaps? Nothing would give me greater pleasure. I must alter my thoughts. Give me a few moments in order to ready myself. Okay, Mina. We'll see in a little bit. I did not have the courage to break the sad news to her. But it must be done sooner or later. What could have happened to this poor young girl? Mina told me that it was mentioned in the papers. Okay, so you just look at things Beautiful like there, and you see these three things and that. Let's look at the table first. It is a photograph of Harker. John the Mina Harker. is very much in love with him. And he is very handsome. Okay. 
let's continue reading these things. I think these are newspapers. This pile of newspapers must have belonged to Harker. He kept them to help him in his hunt. Perhaps I will find the article to which the News Times made reference today. Hmm. September 6th. These articles surely contain some clues which will permit me to discover where the perpetrator of these wrongdoings has taken refuge. Okay. A faithful parishioner escapes the claws of a demon. A faithful parishioner escapes the claws of a demon. Last night, a prudent and uh, devout young lady, Miss Ethel Basingstroke, narrowly escaped the assaults of a lunatic, or rather a demon from hell in her own words. Miss Basin Stroke, 21, who was to be married next month, was exiting St. George's Church, where she mends clothing for the poor, where she was, when she was assailed by a satyr, dressed in black, with flaming red eyes, and possessing the strength of ten men. Miss Basin Stroke explained the man forced her to cleave herself to him, crushing her to the point of suffocation, his titanic, titanic strength, rendering all resistance futile. Her last act before such a dishonorable death, she said, was to bring her hand up to her cross hanging from her necklace and to say a prayer. The man became furious and screamed words in an infernal language, and his intended victim sank to the ground before fainting. Miss Mason Stroke swears to have seen her assailant chained to winged demon who escaped with an uproar in the direction of Victoria Station. Okay. Let's read this one. The current is over, I think. Or did I already do that? Okay. No, I didn't. Daily Big Mirror, a bloody settling of scores between prostitutes. Yesterday evening, shortly after 10 p.m., the lifeless corpse of the lovely Sir McAllister, 19, was found lying under a port cashier at the intersection of Tottenham Court and Euston Road. She is undoubtedly the latest victim of the frequent brawls between prostitutes and back down and nothing to be to defend a more lucrative workplace or to displace a rival whose physique is more in demand. According to a number of her workmates who prefer to remain anonymous, the beautiful Sarah didn't have time to get down to business on her first night before her career was finished for good. The local constabulatory, ordinarily of a slothfulness without equal, but for their inefficiency in solving this type of case, nonetheless have built a strong case which will permit them, as is the case once per century, to rapidly arrest the person responsible for this crime. In fact, the death of the young apprentice is due to the thrust of a small pointed weapon in the neck. A police squadron and pass a good part of the night, shaking down all the ladies of the night who have styled their hair in a bun with the aid of a ninny needle. One of them, Maria Cole, their nine, also known as Eliasis, jo Janet the Par Parrot, Mother Goose, Mammy Bloomers, and Debbie of Epsom, is under particular scrutiny set by the investigators. Her booth faced that of the beautiful Sarah, and all they could get from her were drunken mutterings regarding a stranger who, after quickly finishing with the girl jumped single bound onto the roof of the neighboring house before fleeing a straight line towards St. George's Cathedral. I wager that this pair should find another tune to sing if she wants to convince the authorities of her innocence. Okay. Damnation! This cannot be a coincidence. Harker's letter spoke of his host's interest in London. I must get to the bottom of this. Okay, let's look at this. It's another newspaper. There's like three. Okay, the courier. The bloodless corpse of a chambermaid found near the banks of the Thames, to use residing near the Cursed Mermaid pub, located near the warehouse at Southwark Bridge, made a macabre discovery yesterday while they were playing in a lane. The pale, pale bloodless corpse of young Carolotta Perry, 23, is lying behind a stack of wooden crates. The woman was fully clothed, and based on its on the first official report, her death is due to precise incisions to the neck, which caused her blood to drain. A curious point is the almost complete absence of blood on the ground near the corpse. On the other hand, a few local trollops seem to be led directly towards a wall located on the banks of the Thames, and the perpetrator who had been assisting the police in their investigations confirms having seen them continue to the roof in the same direction that is towards Tate Art Gallery. The precise circumstances are more important, the motivations of such a barbaric act are still unknown. The victim and exemplary servant had an excellent reputation and led a life for that incident. Vampires okay. possess, possess numerous, numerous powers, powers. such as uncommon weapon. physical capabilities and the ability to transform into bats. Okay. Thanks, Van Helsing. Let's look at this window or uh, it's a Parker's map of London, London. quite detailed. Okay. These articles so, surely contain some the clues already, which will so permit me to discover where, where the perpetrator of these wrongdoings has taken refuge. We got the station, New Kent Road. We have to draw the line 
from Here there. Here is the Melford's building. Here is the All Melford's the building. All the way to the National Gallery. And that's the direction which the aggressor took to escape. And then I believe that was this one. Um, we're gonna see this one. St. George's Church. And it is a Victoria Station. George's Here is the Victoria place where Station. this young religious woman was attacked, and that's the direction which the aggressor took to escape. Let's redo that one over again. Okay. I don't think I'm Here again. is the place where this young religious woman was attacked, and that's the direction which the aggressor okay. took to escape. And then there's this one which is Sarah McAllister, the 19-year-old girl, uh, prostitute. Uh, she is around here, Town and Corner, Easton Road. And then from there, she is St. George's Cathedral. So she was found. Ah, here is the spot where McAllister was found, lying under a porte cochere. And that is St. George Cathedral right here. Oh. Okay. And then the last one is it's Tate Art Gallery and Southward Bridge. That's where the corpse of Jenny's young sister was discovered, and that's the direction which the aggressor. All of these paths cross at a point, Godalming Manor, next to Bloomsbury Cemetery. I must get there as soon as possible while it is still day. The park and Mina will wait. Okay, it seems that all of the ways of Sasson took to escape after each attack cross at one point. God Alming Manor next to the Bloomsburg Cemetery. Without a doubt, the Dean must have a lair. I must find and destroy it if I can. The hour of confrontation approaches. That's the link between the recent attacks in London. My dear child, I had forgotten some urgent business that calls me elsewhere in London. We aren't going to the park. It is only postponed for the time being. But I would like you to do something for me. Could you please find me a dozen bulbs of garlic from one of the markets? Bring them here and hang them near the windows. Near the windows? Ah, yes. I do not have the time to explain it to you, but you must do this for me. And if a stranger comes to see you and claims to be here on my behalf, or that of Jonathan, do not, under any circumstance, let them in. You are alarming me, Professor. Should I be worried? No, it is nothing. At least, I think not. All will be well. I shall return this evening, and we shall die together. Okay. Um, I had to adjust some things after recording that last part. Um, but we're back for this thing. Let's go in here. Let's see. Actually, let's look at it first. Godalming Manor. Godalming Manor. Okay, let's go in. Can we all go in? Who's there? Oh, it's a henchman. Hello. I am Professor Ernesto Slavakopit from the Agricultural University of New Hampstead, connected to the Center for Cheese Proficiency. <laughs> I have just retired and have been looking in London for a quiet new residence that is large enough to shelter my expansive It looks like he's not trusting him. He's like, oh, okay. Your employer, or rather that of your employer, corresponds exactly with what I am looking for. Will you announce me so that he and I can discuss a potential offer? The master I.D. and he told me. He told you what? What? Your master, what did he tell you? Certainly to welcome visitors with politeness during his absence and allow them to wait in the lounge. Isn't that correct? <laughs> the master told me to crush the big flies that buzz about here and bother his sleep. He even told me I could eat him if I wanted to. Okay. Ugh. Bother his sleep. Interesting. So we need to find a way, find to, a enter way to enter the house. Location. Let's see what we can do. Oops. 
Good darling, man. Okay, anything here? Let's go in the gay cemetery. Rather unappealing. Rather unappealing. Okay. See if we can enter that. I don't know if we can. Oh, we can. Okay. Let's inspect this. These flies are enormous and rather aggressive. They are unusual specimens. Let's see here, this is locked. It looks locked. Shed or something? Closed. Okay, um... You always want to inspect everything. Let's go over here. Actually, let's go this way. Okay, what's this? It is a martyred angel. Martyred angel. Lovely flowers. They seem to resemble those that I saw at Mina's, but these seem to come from wild rose bushes. Okay. So this. This cemetery encloses some fairly imposing mausoleums, real houses. Hmm. Okay. Looks like those are graves. Let's go over here. Come on. Oops. Oh my god. Okay. Do do do. We already inspected that one. This isn't just cemeteries. Gravestones. This is a mausoleum down here. Um This cemetery encloses. Let's go over here. I don't think we are allowed to go in here yet. I don't know. It's huge. It's kinda cool. Rather sinister, this mausoleum. With its two monks at the entrance. I'm assuming that's Dracula's. Let's see if we can go in. I don't think we can. Something needs to be used here. Uh, I don't have anything right now. Let's see. Just inspecting things so far. Um, this angel. There is a martyred angel. That one there seems to have suffered particularly. So pretty. Weird. Um, it's a pretty angel. I think we're going around, or is this... Okay. Let's go over right here. Okay, there's this guy here. Hmm. Two bottles of wine. Empty. I doubt if the Undertaker can offer me much help. Hmm. Should we take that? This might be useful. I am taking Just it. take it. Let's see if we can talk to him. The grave digger. Hello, my good man. I would appreciate some information on the house next to your beautiful... Oh, got me no time oh, to matter like an old lady, mister. Oh, got me a turn to do. And you take my word for it. Take no piece of cake. You are digging a tomb. Wouldn't one use an ordinary shovel for this kind of labor? Oh, right you are, mister. This is in the tool shed. The combination lock is busted. Okay, I will need something to open it. Open the confounded door. I'm almost done anyhow. You better be. Sir. Have you worked here long? Sir. Long's my name. Have you worked here long? Sir. I've been slogging away here for a wee bit. I used to work in Taring, you know. I and I bartended a wee bit too. Now I got me the best of both. I'm dirty from morning till night. And the clients never complain about it. He's weird. <laughs> He's weird. The combination. And you do not know the combination of this lock? Well, you know, as it happens, it'd be the boss who mm. knows it. It's stronger than the old one. On accounts of the blighters who lurk around the cemetery at night this past while. He, he told me the combo, but, uh... Let me guess. You forgot it. Mister, now, I'd be a grave digger, me. Not a pen pusher. Have to wait till the boss gets back to opening it. I'll use my mitts while I wait. Opening the shed. If you would happen to remember some of the numbers, I could perhaps try to open it. 
All combinations have their logic, generally. Oh, ain't likely, mister. I can't remember a thing. Um, wait, wait, wait. Okay. JB Lemon and his wife. Okay, JB Lemon and his wife. Where is this mausoleum located? Near the north stairs, across from the entrance. Yeah, I ain't been to see because, well, I got to be better. So, JB. Do. Don't matter because, well, I figure, oh, well, if you think, yeah. Hey, now, he also said to flip the numbers I find. So, like, a six. Next nine, upside down. <laughs> Whatever. Okay, goodbye. I shall leave you. If we ever need help again, I'll come to you, I sir. Gov. Gov. Okay. Or I can read the dialogue in the journal. Let's see this. It is a martyr. This must have been a military or a sword collector. Okay. Let's keep walking. Is this? There is a martyr. Okay. Didn't he say a cross? The mausoleum of J.B. Lemon. Okay. We need a... Okay, there we go. Scratch off all the dirt. God, imagine the feeling of that with this thing. It's like weird feeling. I think we can go like this. quick let's see okay on the two mentioned by long the nate dates or names are john okay so 1703 through 1772 and then i think it's the space before or the ages they died um let's see 1703 he would have been nine and then six 69 oh sorry um and then 72 69 72 i'm gonna go with that so let's go back We'll try a couple combinations with that. 69. I just had it. Okay. Maybe it's seventy two sixty-nine. Okay. So like so it is six nine, but it's nine six. Gosh. And then this one is Oops. Wait, where is it? Oh, okay. This one's eight. And... Nine, eight. Open. There we go. Genius. Just getting into me a while. Okay. This statue was carved recently. Let's take the lantern. We're gonna need the lantern. A lantern. 
I'll take it. Night will soon fall. And we all know what that means. Uh, it's not dragon. It's kind of like a shed. Um, see in the, the air. Undertaker's cloakroom, most likely. Cloakroom. Okay. The Undertaker's store. Can we? I think we just hit the lantern. And that's it. Okay. Hmm. Please. Okay, good. Now what? Is there anything else we have to do? I got to get digging. Okay, cool. There it is, my friend. The door is open. You should be able to finish your work in time. Now, I wish you to tell me about Godalming Manor, next to the cemetery. It's inhabited. Is that not correct? Yep. Right to you, mister. But hasn't been that way long, no, no. Nothing moves during the day. Ain't been a single soul. But at night, <laughs> there's something else, eh? I am certain that it's one of them blokes over We've been rummaging around in this cemetery at night. That's why the boss put the blasted lock on the shed. Hasn't seemed to stop him, though. The only one bothered is me. <sighs> Don't need the shovel now. Almost done. This sounds like a Harry Potter character. Other entrance. Have you perhaps heard of another entrance to the manor? As for another entrance, I couldn't say, mister. The old watchman, the bloke who made the statues, he knew a bit about around here, so... A tunnel between, the, between the cemetery and the manor. Between the cemetery and the manor, he did. Okay, let's ask about that. Where is the watchman? Tell me, can I speak with him? Not likely, as the old man's oh. dead. He's in the mausoleum down low. Mm -hmm. It's got two monks at the entrance and a big rusted grill. He's resting there with his sweet book. And it'll say something about the passage. But I ain't got a clue how to get in. Mm. No visitors at all. Goodbye. I shall leave you. So his is in that room. Right. In that mausoleum. Um... And yeah, we'll have to inspect it. Liam of the former watchman. There is an inscription on the book, Okay. But I cannot read it because of the darkness. So we'll need to read it. On the ground of the former watchman's crypt, I was able to distinguish the text in Graham Stone. It is possible to read because of utter darkness. I must find a way to illuminate it. Perhaps the text may help me to open the grate and encloses the tomb. Okay, there's this. This might be. Oh my god, I completely forgot. Okay, that might be useful. So let's use that to open the grate. Okay. This is an iron bar. Perfect. The grate is slightly ajar. I must now. Okay, okay. We had to put the lantern on the shovel. So now I can do it. Perfect. I can read the inscription like that. She's my brain better. Let's see. Hmm. So it says the archangel guarding this tomb will not let in, but he is hard as pure and grief is genuine. If your despair makes him uh, you late, he will open this iron gate. Great. But in order to move him, you must first sever sever the stone hearted, the celestial henchman right there. Up high to down low you will go. The blood of the eyelids will flow. Okay, whatever that means. This poem seems to indicate how to enter the mausoleum. Okay. 